Good evening and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Um, before we get started, I would ask the audience, we have a lot of new people here tonight, um, our microphones that are sprinkled throughout pick up radio frequencies from cell phones. So rather than just mute, I need to have you turn them off or if you're near a microphone, it comes back as feedback to the live and recorded audience. Appreciate that. And with that, we'll move into call the roll. Gladly. President Wasserman? Here. Vice President Baker? Here. Secretary Kaminsky? Here. Treasurer Branstad? Here. Member Gordon? Here. Member McFarland? Here. And Member Vanderkellen? Here. Okay. All present and counted for. Thank you. Uh, we'll move into the consent agenda. Uh, as, as per the agenda, I'll just read them off in brief. Uh, we have the approval of last week's meetings. The administration recommends renewal of food service contract with Chartwells for the 2013-14 school year. This is the final renewal of our four-year contract. The district will begin the RFP request process in October to meet deadlines for a new contract in place for the 14-15 school year. Uh, administration is also requesting approval to purchase 73 Cisco 3602 Aeronet access points and one Cisco Catalyst uh, POE switch. The access points will be used to replace existing access points in the district. will have no longer be supported by Cisco as of January 2014. Um, I'll let you read the rest of the details accordingly. It's part of our technology plan. In 2.4, the following staff members announce resignations. We have uh, uh, two speech pathologists, a, a teacher and a paraprofessional. And approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of February is listed, along with uh, purchase orders exceeding $3,000 and list of purchasing card transactions exceeding $3,000. And lastly, approvals requested authorize the payment of a Curry Kendall uh, professional services bill. Any questions or additions or deletions there too? Seeing none, uh, we'll move into a vote. All in favor say aye. Move? Oh, someone's got to move. I'm I sorry. Will. How about if yeah. I move to <laughs> approve the agenda item 2.1 through 2.6? I'll support that. Okay. Yeah. Moved by, uh, by uh, Treasurer Branstad, supported by uh, Member Gordon. Now, any questions, comments? My apologies. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There are no opposition. Consent agenda passes. Now we'll move on to requests to address the board. There have been no formal requests to address the board. And uh, if there's anybody else that would uh, like to address the board, please come forward, state your name, school attendance area, and limit your discussion to five minutes, please. Hello, my name is Craig Vandenberg. Um, it's my wife, Amy. We just wanted to talk briefly about uh, the pair pros at our school. Um, we have twin boys. They're in, they have autism. They're in the ESA program. Um, one of them, their, their classroom seems to be doing good. The other classroom, we're, we're struggling to keep paraprofessionals in the classroom. Um, I uh, I don't know exactly if it's what it's related to, but we he always seems to get um, for the last three years, temporary pair pros in and out. He only gets them for a week or two at a time. And uh, he's really struggling with, with school now. He, every morning he's got limited language and he wakes up and says he doesn't want to go to school. And we just were asking that you evaluate the pair pros and try to keep steady help there for him so he can, you know, continue to, to learn. He's good with the iPads and technology and somebody needs to be with him to learn what he needs and if he always has new people coming in and out he's he's suffering at school and so I guess I'm just asking to evaluate the program and and see if there's anything that you can do to help thank you thank you thank, thank you, you. <clears throat> I'm his wife Amy and I'm going to follow up on that we kind of have two different perspectives dad and mom and so I'm going to just talk about my words uh, my son who was prompted to say fundamental expressions of I love you mom now on his own accord says a dozen times a day no school he wakes up every morning comes in looks me square in the eyes and says no school please unprompted 
The essay Classroom and Dynamics has created anxiety and aversion, plain dislike for attending school at a young age. A major factor is inconsistent paras, and without a constant, my child cannot be guided through the day effectively to accomplish educational progress. Weekly, a new para has been rotated with my son for two and a half years. I'm sure new staff without proper training is not aware of methods to meet IEP goals. Collins IEP has, simple, has been simplified because he did not meet one IEP goal, not one. Collins IEP, but he's, it was not due to his capabilities but lack of support to help him achieve his goals. We have repeatedly raised the concern, consistently expressed our position, and it has gone unaddressed. My son is falling through the cracks, not receiving an educational strategy to meet his full potential. The valuable time is slipping by each week and causing great distress to Colin in our home. Quality paras, they're key to the education of my son, and the ESA is not providing that. Can you imagine the fear of my son Colin faces each day going into an environment which every three to five days a new person spends a day with him with zero experience in communication, zero. The boy has courage beyond our comprehension. How would you feel in the fear of going into a Latin class unable to understand a thing? So it's important and it's, he's causing, it's just suffering. So thank you for your time. So. Can I just, just ask a question before you leave? I, I heard you reference a classroom that we have in an ESA classroom. The pro concern you have, not that we can't still assist with that, I'm not implying that. But is that with the ESA? Because that's a different run program than what our district runs. I understand. So will you clarify which program it is or which classroom? He's in the ESA pro He's program in the ESA at Plymouth. Program. Yes, okay. and I do understand. Yeah. You know, the we will follow up. I mean, we work very closely with them, but they're responsible for, I mean, their teacher, their parapros, and right. so on. But we'd be more than happy to look into it. I'll make sure we have follow-up on it. We've gone through the chains of, you know, supervision and promised repeatedly that it would be addressed and remedied and it's gone too far yeah, okay. so yeah. thanks you're welcome thank you for bringing it forward anybody else care to address the board tonight seeing none um, we'll move on to our rest of our agenda and the first item is a Board of Education matter, is uh, a resolution for the girls' high basketball team. Yep, they're back there, hiding in the back pew, huh? Um, and I guess what we'd like to do is, uh, I guess we'll just read the resolution. We'll make the public aware of what we're doing and why. And then uh, when the resolution is read, I would call uh, Mr. Wellman and his uh, team to come forward. So, Mr. Secretary. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a resolution regarding the outstanding accomplishments of the HH um, High, Dow High School 2013 Varsity Schools basketball team, Midland Public Schools, Michigan. Uh, whereas the, the Charger 2013 Varsity Girls basketball team was ranked fifth in Class A in the state of Michigan, whereas the Charger 2013 Varsity Girls basketball team made HH Dow High School history by achieving a very impressive, perfect 20 0 regular season record. Whereas the Charger 2013 Varsity Girls basketball team was victorious in district semifinal play, stretching their remarkable season to a record 21 0. Whereas the Charger 2013 Varsity Girls basketball team was the SVS or the Saginaw Valley League North champions. Um, whereas the Charger 2013 um, Varsity Girls basketball team had 11 different team members who were leading scorers this season. Truly a hard, hardworking, passionate team of dedicated school athletes. Whereas the Charger 2013 varsity school basketball team represented themselves, their team, HH Dow High School, Midland Public Schools, and the City of Midland very proudly and with great respect for their opponents, officials, equipment, and venues. Whereas Mr. Bob Wellman, coach of the Charger 2013 varsity girls basketball team, led this exceptional team assuredly and commendably, displaying sportsmanship and pride throughout this extremely competitive season. Therefore, it be resolved the Midland Public Schools Board of Education formally recognizes and congratulates the Charger 2013 Varsity Schools basketball team for the remarkably successful, undefeated regular competitive season 
We wish this team and coach continued success in all of their future sports and academic endeavors. Can I take a motion to uh, vote on the resolution? Move. So moved by Lynn. Support, support by Angela. Um, all in favor, and then we'll go to comments. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay, the ayes have it. Um, before we as board comment, uh, I would like the members of the team and Bob to come to the podium, please, and I'll present them the resolution, and then we can comment appropriately while they are standing there. First of all, Bob, and young ladies, congratulations. And, and second of all, two things for me personally. Uh, this is the first generation of girls basketball at Dow High that I haven't known somebody for about 15 years. <laughs> so this is unique for me. Is uh, My daughter had the opportunity to play for Mr. Wellman also. And number two, at the last board meeting, I'm sure you weren't watching on the public TV <laughs> channel. Uh, but just in case you were, I'll be repetitive. Um, I went through a similar experience as you did in high school and was devastated when we lost early in the state tournament. I mean, just devastated. But 20 years later, 30 years later, 40 years later now, we talk about the undefeated season we had. We don't remember that. We remember the unique opportunity to play for an undefeated team. And I hope you folks never lose sight of that proud accomplishment. So congratulations to all of you. This truly was a, a wonderful group of young ladies, and we are, hold up, um, I'm very proud of having the opportunity to work with this young, this group of young ladies, and uh, they were exceptional on the court and off the court, and I think in my, my opinion, they really made Midland Public Schools proud of what they did and what they have accomplished, and I couldn't have asked for a better group. So thank you again for this honor. I know they are honored for being here as well. Thank you. Thank you. Stay put. Any comments from any of the board members? <clears throat> I've been following your whole season in the paper, and you guys are just amazing. You guys are superstars. Just a great job. I, I wish you know, at that level of high school I could have had a championship a season like that. And you guys really have a special, special um, experience in high school. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. And I had a chance to get to a couple of the games, and you girls were definitely fun to watch. And, and you can tell when you have a team, a team that appreciates each other, works together, and with your coach. So thank you for making all of us proud of you. And, and you can carry that pride with you forever. So. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And now we're going to move on for information to a um, a community school model presentation by Ms. Shannon Blazy and Judge Allen. I don't know who all else is here. Good evening. I'm Shannon Blazy, the assistant principal at East Lawn Elementary, and I have the privilege of introducing you to the key people who have been very influential in implementing the community school model this year at East Lawn Elementary. <clears throat> Tonight, we have the Honorable Judge Allen from the Circuit Family and Probate Court of Midland County, Mr. Mark Stevens, the Regional Director for the Department of Human Services of Midland and Isabella Counties, and Mr. Chris Corbett, Department of Human Services Worker at East Lawn Elementary. They will be discussing what the community school model is, how the community school model positively affects attendance rates, and how the community school model assists families and students in other capacities. Thank you. Judge Allen. I'm a little shorter. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice to see you all. Thank you for having me and thank you ha for having us because it really is a collaboration that you're going to be hearing about uh, this evening. It's been quite extraordinary. Um, I've been involved in a lot of projects in Midland uh, and this one has come together at a speed that is warp speed. It's been really fun to work on it and, and to be called into it because um, certainly we have a history in, in Midland of solving problems and that history goes back a while as far as truancy. As I think you all know, I'm the juvenile judge and so have been working with young people for a long time at this point. It's 13 years that I've been on the bench. And one of the first things that we did in 2001 was to establish a truancy protocol that was um, pretty groundbreaking all the way around and is used as a model throughout the state, actually, which is really um, um, a compliment, if you will. And it is very effective. We've had it in, a, in, in uh, effect for, like I say, 12 years, and it is a prevention program, and that's really what we're talking about here, is a prevention program of getting young people before they enter into um, activities that I don't really want to see in the courtroom. So um, the, the program, the protocol was um, established in 2001, and at this point we have all kinds of stati statistics on the effectiveness of it. In the middle and high school, that's generally speaking where we're getting the kids, and 50% um, of the kids as a result of the early intervention with the school principals are able to avoid the court system. So I know that sounds odd for a judge to be saying that, but that is a good thing. We don't want young people to be having records. And so 50% of the, the kids don't even have to come to court. Of the 50% that do come to court, um, we have um, a, a, a very effective uh, track record as far as the cooperation between the schools and Midland Public Schools was the first pilot. I don't know if you remember that. I mean, I'm aging myself here, but um, Midland Public Schools was the first of the county school systems to uh, enter into the protocol. So when I look back on the 12, 13 years that we've had this protocol in, a, in, in effect, I can actually track the recidivism or the reoffense rate of the young people who come into the court. And it's 17% which is extraordinarily low and that uh, the types of offenses that are coming in after they've come into court on the on the truancy is um, are what I would consider to be low level but at any rate we had this why do we want a truancy protocol I'm speaking to the choir here I know but uh, literacy obviously is the big is the big key to a functioning adult that's why <laughs> That's why we're all here, and it has been shown that there is a really positive correlation between going to school and being able to be successful, not only in middle and high school, but also in college and as, as an adult. And literacy is, a, is a, just a gigantic problem. Um, I heard a statistic the other day that 49% um, of our people going into the prison system are, uh, do not have high school degrees. Now that's, that's it, it's horrible. It's a horrible commentary on something. So Midland has been proactive in so many, in so many respects. One of the things, one of our frustrations with the, with, the, with the program though has been that the middle and the high school has been easier to address, if you will. The elementary school protocol has been uh, something that has been harder to to get what the trigger is for the children come actually coming to school and we know um, from the legal system and especially in abuse and neglect cases that elementary school is really where it all begins the protocol that we had in existence before this year um, really addressed the parents, which is absolutely the way we need to go. We all know that if you're going to be dealing with the child, you're dealing with the whole family system. So um, the 
solution under the old protocol, if you will, was um, in court, in district court. All of the, the prosecutor's office has been wonderful, the district judges, the court system has all been very cooperative. But it, bottom line involved having to sue the parent so that the child would be coming to school. And we did it a couple of times, but it, you know, it doesn't lend itself to cooperation, shall we say. So um, I have two people that I would really like to highlight other than Shannon Blasey, who was just up here, who's been spectacular. We have Jackie Warner, who's from Community Mental Health and is a youth intervention specialist. She's been with the court, uh, oh, for a long time, but she's an employee of Community Mental Health. And Diana LaRue, who is a new intake worker um, who is employed, she's on my staff. So Diana got this new job and she says, Judge, you know, we just don't have uh, the ki kind of compliance in the elementary level that we really should. And I said, I know, I know, just, you know, give me a solution. So through different activities, and they were very persistent, they came came back multiple times as far as looking for a solution. It, it's, it, it really is wonderful. And um, so I had heard about a, um, a model in Grand Rapids, it's Sibley School, it's an elementary school, and it's called Community School Model. So that's, what, that's what's on your agenda, that's what I'm gonna talk about. Um, so I said to Diana and to Jackie, you go ahead, take a contingent from Midland, see what you can see, see if this works, see if this is something that we can adapt here. And um, so they went um, along with a Midland group from Floyd Elementary School and then the East Lawn group. And they came back and it was just all guns blazing, everything. Uh, this was the solution, this is what we needed to do, and it was right in the middle of uh, Recovering Youth Futures, I think, Carl, you, uh, hopefully you all know about that, and I said, well, we can do, we do one, let's do one. No, 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 two. And uh, truly, um, Mark Stevens, who's here, and, and is the Director of the Department of Human Services, said, we really have to have the Department of Human Services in on this. I said, okay, we'll, you know, we'll facilitate a meeting. So I thought there were going to be four people at this meeting in November. I just want to give you the timeline. It's March now, and this was a November meeting. And Mark Stevens, who is here this evening and will say some words, um, came into the meeting. Kathy Dollard from Community Mental Health had 20 people at this meeting. And there was an enthusiasm and a, a fire under um, the various constituent groups, if you will. And East Lawn um, is really to be commended as far as taking the initiative to go to Sibley School and, and to come back and light the fire under us. So I'm, I'm very, very pleased um, to talk about this program. It's an evidence-based program. The whole idea, it's a simple idea, um, as a lot of really good ones are, it, the whole idea is to bring services to the school. So Sibley is a, uh, in an area that has high level of poverty, I think it was 90% poverty. Um, we, all, we all know what that means, I think, in the education system, that a lot of times we don't have the types of attendance and we don't have the types of, of uh, connections with other institutions that we, we really should to be able to help the lowest demographic. This community school uh, model was put into place. It was the, top, it was the, the bottom 10% achieving school in Grand Rapids, and it is now the top 10%. So why is that? Well, the Department of Human Services shifted resources, which is what you're seeing here in Midland, um, since November of 2012, and put the worker right in the school to be able to get the barriers that there are to attendance. So what does that involve? That involves knowing where the resources are and knowing um, <clears throat> that the mental health services need to be defined. And so the, um, the corporate community in Grand Rapids really adopted this and there is a resource person who helps pull together all of the resources that are needed for these uh, young people and Chris Corbett um, is the identity of the human being that is called the success coach and he's been 
quite wonderful. So Mark walked in, Mark Stevens walked into this meeting identifying uh, Mr. Corbett, Chris Corbett, and really putting it all into place for us to be able to go um, at, at, at about 100 miles an hour. It, was, it, it has been really, really fun. Why was there the need at East Lawn? Well, it, it really took um, the four institutions being at the table. So who did we have? We had the school system, we had uh, community mental health, we had the Department of Human Services, and we had the court. They were all at the table with a, a great deal of enthusiasm. And at East Lawn, uh, um, very carefully, uh, as far as being able to identify the population, there were 173 kids with five absences at that, uh, at that point, and 109 of those 173 children had greater than eight absences. That's unacceptable. That means that you have children who are not learning. And approximately half of the population had open Department of Human Services cases we were able to uh, discern. So now Chris Corbett is, is in the school, and he's going to tell you about the successes because it really is um, fun to listen to all of the things that were able to happen, electricity not being cut off for families, um, water being able to be turned on, um, evictions able to be avoided, and we have the wonderful sources here from the Department of Human Services, not as um, a um, a, a, a horrible, um, you know, presence uh, in these people's lives, but rather as a facilitator of success, and that really is the way to look at this model. Um, there are still significant needs uh, that needed that are needed uh, to fully implement the program. There's the resource person, as I've, as I've indicated, and there's also a part-time nurse. That was a critical um, factor for the Sibley School and the community school model working in Grand Rapids. And um, we have, Mark Stevens and I have met with the faith-based community because we feel like this is a really uh, obvious fit. And it's obviously a, a great fit, fit with uh, Midland Public Schools. But it's, it's one of those moments when you can say to the taxpayers, your tax dollars are doing wonderful things because you have institutions that are not normally known for getting rid of barriers, but rather they sometimes it's viewed as um, creating them. But I, I, I really do want to commend Mark Stevens, who hopefully he's on his way up. Uh, <laughs> um, he is the Department of Human Services Director, as I've said, for Midland and Isabella County. It used to be just for Midland, so he has two counties now instead of one. And um, Mark and I have had the pleasure of collaborating on more than one project, but I have to say, this has been really an extraordinary one. So Mark Stevens. Thank you, Judge Allen. I, I would just like to say to, to you, and the board, and to all the people of Midland, how lucky you are to have Judge Allen in your community. <clears throat> uh, she's a real go-getter, and a, she can bring people together like no one I've ever seen. Um, when Judge Allen called us about this project, I was familiar already with the Sibley project and some other projects across the state. And <clears throat> um, knowing uh, how fond the judge is of data and analysis, uh, as much as I am, I figured that it was uh, vital that we get started as quickly as possible. So when we had the meeting at the end of November, I came ready to go and suggested that we start on the 1st of January when school comes back. And I think I shocked everybody, uh, but I knew my people. I knew we could get it done. Uh, I was able to spare uh, Chris Corbett to go to the school because we determined there were enough cases between the two schools that he could still have a caseload because I'm not getting any more staff for this and uh, still be at the schools. And the advantage to having his caseload comprised of families that go to the school is we can call the families in to talk to their caseworker and actually have them at the school. And while they're there, they can talk to the teachers and the principal and whoever else they need to talk to. Um, plus, Chris was very enthusiastic about doing this. Um, he's been doing an, a fantastic job, and uh, I'm going to let him talk about some of the accomplishments. Um, 
But this is something that if we are successful, you know, I think it can probably be expanded. Um, it's uh, only is working because we're able to get all the players at the table. And that's what Judge Allen does best, is get us all there. Because as far as I could tell, no one can say no to Judge Allen. <laughs> um, with that, I'm going to introduce Chris Corbett, who's one of my workers, who's going to talk to you about what he's been doing out there since the beginning of January. Chris? Okay, thank you. Um, as Judge Allen mentioned, um, kind of the baseline number, you know, the 173 students um, with five or more absences, you know, that was our January 11th number, analyzing it from, um, you know, the beginning of the school year to that point. Um, so since then, just kind of some, some good, good things that we've been doing. Um, as far as DHS assistance numbers wise, um, you know, things like turning electricity back on in houses that it's already been shut off, or storing water um, to people's homes, preventing evictions, preventing homelessness. Um, so far, um, as of March 25th, since January 7th, um, there have been 27 homes, 44 students, and 166 family members that have avoided the scenarios. So those are some large numbers in only a three-month period of time. Um, being in the school, um, as Mr. Stevens mentioned, kind of gives me a, you know, it gives DHS a positive presence. Like, they, they do care about us. They are here to help us. So being in the school makes me available, makes me accessible to the parents and, um, you know, and to the families there, which is what we want. Um, so far, our attendance numbers, we've been live with our program, which includes um, incentives for families, incentives for students, which I'll go over later. Um, we've been live for three weeks, and we've seen a drop already in tardies and leave earlies. So um, already we're seeing the benefits of this program, and I assume that as we go on and uh, this program further develops, we'll only see those numbers continue. Um, how this works is on a, um, on a weekly basis, myself, um, Shannon Blazy, Mrs. Westervelt, um, Aaron Flamont, the school social worker, and Jackie Warner, we get together and we review the attendance list. And... Um, we kind of crunch the numbers and we go over kid by kid basis and you know Jackie Warner might share information on her side from um, community mental health that she has. Um, Bonnie or Shannon might share some insight, things that are going on in the classroom academically with these children and then um, Aaron Flamont, the social worker, might go over some um, issues emotionally that the child might be experiencing. And through this process we can really get a grasp of what barriers are preventing these children and these families from attending school. So we get a very good feel for, um, you know, is, it, is there something on, on my end that I'm aware of or is there something going on um, with the parents at the home that we can help out with and get this child back in school. And we can identify those that are coming up or might become a problem or become a pattern before that happens. Um, so what this involves is you'll see um, Bonnie and Shannon have theirs on. I'm slacking tonight. They're blue bracelets. They're our East Lawn Promise bracelets. We had Saginaw Spirit hockey players come to our school. Um, they read hockey books to the kids, and they talked about, you know, the players were like, every day my coach says it's important. I have to be to practice every day. I have to be there early. I have to be on time. You know, try your best and just reemphasizing to the kids that, you know, hard work and being there every day pays off. So they each have their, bra their bracelets that they wear to school every day as a symbol of that promise. Um, and then a weekly what we'll do is when we go through the attendance, um, through the donations that we've gotten through a few um, community businesses, we'll call the students down, you know, who we've seen them, they've had their bracelets on. We'll say, hey, thanks for being here this week. You know, we'll give them a coupon for a free Slurpee or um, a kid's meal at McDonald's or a kid's meal at Subway. Just, you know, little random incentives, you know, so the kids are, start to put a little pressure on their parents. You know, hey, I need to go to school. I need to be there. Here's my bracelet, you know, and then they get rewarded for it spontaneously. Like, hey, thanks for, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here on time. Um, so already, you know, we see kids and they'll see us in the hallways and they'll go like this. Oh, I have my bracelet on. So um, we're seeing enthusiasm um, on the children's behalf as well. Um, as, Judge Mal as Judge Allen mentioned, um, removing the barriers for the families is something that we're doing. And so um, the incentives with the kids, you know, are just the random free food prizes and special events that they get to do if they have perfect attendance throughout the month. But we're also doing things for the parents. Because if we don't educate the parents, if we don't try and break this pattern of behavior, then it's not going to do us any good. So we have um, a number of upcoming events, and I'm not, I won't list the dates, but 
Um, we're going to do budgeting classes available for the parents in our parent resource room. We're going to have an East Lawn Power Up night to kind of talk about internet safety, cyber safety, um, the various online educational tools that Vinland Public Schools uses, showing our parents how to use them either on an iPad or a computer or a mobile phone. Um, we're going to have cooking classes collaborating with the two churches. They're going to show the families how to make three meals, the casserole state meals that can feed a large amount of people. Then they'll, they'll not only learn how to make it, but they'll get the ingredients to make it at home, and they'll have that knowledge of how to make you know four or five different meals with the ingredients. Um, we're going to have um, parenting-centered classes that Diana LaRue is going to run um, at the school for us. And um, we mentioned bringing the agencies and bringing the resources into the school. Um, at Parent Teacher Conference Night at East Lawn, for one hour we had over 15 agencies set up their booths in our gym. And we had over 40 families come through in one hour and come through and get information from the agencies. They got a free thing of laundry detergent from East Lawn just as kind of a gift from us and from DHS saying, hey, thanks for getting your kid to school. Thanks for being here on time. So bringing those resources into the parents, making it accessible for the families to access. Um, so... Um, that's kind of a roundabout explanation of, of what we're doing. Um, we're seeing um, improvement in the attendance numbers, as I mentioned. Um, we have more incentives scheduled for the kids, fun things to do on a monthly basis for the kids that have perfect attendance for that month. We have um, Midland Chemic baseball players coming on Thursday to kind of do a little baseball clinic for the kids that have been had perfect attendance through March. Um, then we have some things booked um, through April and May and June. So um, it's kind of an overall I guess, uh, sphere of what we're doing. Um, I guess, are there, are there any questions? No, it's absolutely amazing that you're doing this and <clears throat> taking care of these families. I really appreciate it. I, I have a question. <clears throat> was, it, was there any unique characteristics with Eastlawn that maybe you adapted that was different from the Grand Rapids? I know there was differences as far as the free and reduced lunch late rate, but did you innovate at all? Did you learn? thus far along the way there's some things you didn't expect um i guess kind of the kind of the sheer numbers surprised us once we broke down the numbers um as far as the free and reduced lunch rate um you know at, at sibley it was around 90 i think ours is what 67. Yeah, um, so it's up there it's up there yeah. um so as far as the population and the poverty levels levels they're somewhat similar um i have 157 dhs cases at east lawn and then the others are comprised at Floyd. So a um, little over 50% of the school, as Judge Allen mentioned. So uh, we, we haven't done everything exactly as Sibley has. Like he said, we've kind of tweaked it uh, with the parental incentives. Um, but we're in constant collaboration with, um, with the, the team at Sibley, just kind of saying, hey, what are some of the growing pains that you guys experienced? You know, just kind of give us a heads up on what might be coming, what things worked well for them, and really tried to tailor it to East Lawn. So, yeah. and, and how many years have they had their program there at Sibley? At Sibley, it's been there for I think five years is since this program has been implemented. So it's they've had information. They've been at it for a while, and so that's that's great. Yep. And did you say you're about three weeks into this? Is yeah. Yeah, we're three weeks with our incentive program where we track it every single week. We, our team meets to discuss um, the barriers um, of each student, and then where we have the incentives for the students and the parents. So I've been in the school since January 7th, just as a worker, and then, um, you know, with all the planning and the logistic wise of getting the incentives, um, you know, we've been live three weeks. Really love the approach, data-driven question. If, if Sibley's been at it for five years, have there been any longitudinal studies? What happens to these kids as they move from elementary school into middle school, or maybe even to high school by now, of those kids that have been, that were at least touched early on? I don't have any of that data available to me. Um, I'm sure that's, that's a great question to ask if it's come down the line. I know that they've been doing it in a roundabout way for five years, but recently they've just implemented the red light, green light, um, yellow light status is where as the absences tally up, you know, green light is a low amount of absences, yellow lights is somewhere, and then the red light is where they have a high number of absences. You got something to add to that? I, I would. It, you need to understand that this is an evidence-based program that actually was originally implemented out east in Massachusetts, I believe, Chris. And so the longitudinal studies are amazing. They're, they're, the data is uh, extraordinary. And, and early it's an early intervention. And the so habits stick. It, it happens. And um, 
you know, with and, and I, I really believe that the truancy protocol has been critical in the reduction of our delinquency. You know, we have a 81 percent reduction in in delinquency in Midland since 1980, 1998, and a large part of it has been the collaboration between the court system and schools and DHS and community mental health. So the longitudinal studies on this model are amazing. Be happy to forward it to you. <laughs> <laughs> sure, just a couple of comments from me. I mean, <clears throat> in my six years of being here in the community, I've had the opportunity to have a few lunches with the judge. And when you light a fire underneath her and when she becomes passionate about something, you better have been serious about bringing a topic up to her the first time because if she buys into it, she makes it happen. It, and the characterization of her remark was absolutely dead on, I thought. And so without your assistance, this would not have happened. That's just the plain truth. So we're very fortunate, I think, to, to be benefactors of this kind of a community and for agency a collaborative effort here. So it makes me proud to be associated with it. But you guys are doing all the work along with Shannon and Bonnie at the at the building level. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, thank you very much. Ed, amazing job, guys. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. Well, we're going to move on to a, another thank you. We have a august list of folks here today um, that have uh, taken the time, energy, effort, and financial uh, wherewithal to supply each of our classrooms in Midland Public Schools an American flag. And while this may sound, oh, somewhat small in our mission, it's also very large in our mission, that every class show that proudly uh, in, a, in, a, in a high integrity flag versus something that's maybe been around for a long time and yellowing and et cetera. And so we'd like to thank the, the following groups. Um, We've got the Veterans Community Outreach Team of the Dow Chemical Company, represented by Brad Bryantford here today. Uh, the American, Post, American Legion Post 165, the American Legion Post 165 Auxiliary, the AMVETS Post 3652, Air Reinhardt. Jerry, sorry to interrupt. Can, can we just have them raise their hands? So no, I mean, they're going to come forward. Oh, okay. As I call you out, why don't you come forward? I'm sorry. <laughs> just so <laughs> we can see who to thank. Yes, yeah. yes we're going to have them come forward here in a minute, but uh, we'll have them come as we, as we address them. Let's see. I stopped with Air Reinhardt, yeah. um, the Kiwanis Club of Midland, the Midland County Veterans Service Officer, Boss Ulrich, He's not here. the Midland Elks Lodge, the Midland Rotary Club. Is <laughs> the VFW Post 3651. I'm representing them also. Okay, right. And VFW Auxiliary 3651. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> she got all of her officers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one group that covers the rest of us. Yeah. So, Brad, on behalf of the Board of Education, on behalf of all of our children and every teacher in every classroom, and to all of you, thank you very much for your patriotism, your service and what you're doing to instill that in our kids, and I appreciate that a whole lot. We'd love to hear from you as okay. I walk away. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> um, so a little bit about myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I am the commander of the VFW here in Midland. I also lead the Veterans Outreach Team at Dow Chemical. Uh, for the past several years, I've been going into your schools and teaching flag etiquette to your third, fourth, and fifth graders. I can't do that without the support of some of these folks here. Uh, the different veterans groups have helped me out in the past, supplying me materials and stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, last year, the uh, Senate passed um, Bill 637, requiring every school to have a flag in each classroom. Since we normally teach flag etiquette, we thought this was a good fit for us to help you all out on. Um, we first went to the veterans groups. We got enough support from the veterans groups, but we just didn't quite have enough, so we decided to ask also our friends in the fraternal organizations, um, Rotary, Kiwanis, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to miss a couple names here. Uh, Kiwanis Elks, Rotary, um, Lions Clubs, all those groups. And between all of them, we managed to collect enough money to buy not only the flags for your group here, 
Um, we have some extra money left over. We're going to be supplying some flags to the Bullock Creek and to the Meridian School Systems here in the not too distant future. So, wow. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Could I, could I, could I ask yeah. a quick question? Yep. Uh, Dr. Kaminsky has a question. Yeah. I, a quick question. The, the, some of the flags that are in the classrooms right now, how old are some of those? Because um, some I, of them are tattered. I've taught in probably uh, just about every one of the schools. The ones I've seen haven't looked that bad of shape because um, we do make comments about them every once in a while just to make sure they're displayed. Yeah. I would imagine there's a few that are in the 10 to 15, if not older, years they're old. They're so fading. They're due for starting replacement. Starting to fade a little bit, yep. Um, the new ones here we purchased out of a company out of uh, Ohio. They're all American-made flags, um, so we were able to get them. Yep. And then part of the, the donations that we received from these folks also, um, my veterans team at Dow, we purchased six brand-new flags, four-by-six flags that we teach your children how to fold and how to respect them. Um, we go into the schools. As a matter of fact, we're going into um, Auburn Elementary School Thursday to teach three or four sessions to their groups on it. Um, part of that program, we also bring folks in. Um, my last session was at St. John's across the street here. I had a member of the local fire department, local police department, and I had a gentleman from Dow who's a uh, uh, Marine Corps Reserve. And as I go into the classroom, I'll start talking about role models and heroes and ask the kids what they think of a role model and a hero. And then I'll tell them I bring some of my role models with me and I have the folks walk in in uniform and the kids' eyes just <laughs> go like this. And mm -hmm. there was one little child, I thought he was going to wet himself. He was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> We do have a good time with it, and uh, we try to do about five or six schools every year in the springtime. So, thank, thank you, thank you very much for your service. You. Thank, thank you, all of you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, moving on to the rest of our agenda. Uh, we're into curriculum instruction. I believe we have a cast study committee minutes from Lynn. Yes, we met on March 18th here at at the administration building. And we started out talking about the Common Core State Standards, and Dr. Ellison gave an overview of the core, Common Core State Standards <laughs> and related that Michigan adopted these in 2010. At this point, all but five states have adopted these standards and are using them to organize and deliver K-12 instruction. We were invited to explore the website for more information. Luann Bensinger, Scott Cochran, Bob Cooper, and Randy Shadig joined the committee to discuss the impact of these standards on the MPS curriculum. Each coordinator described what shifts will be necessary from what we currently do to be aligned with the new Common Core, what professional development has already been completed at the elementary, middle, and high school levels, and what professional development is being planned to complete the alignment. Dr. Ellison also reviewed the questions, concerns, and issues that still remain in regard to these standards and related that the newer, new Smarter Balanced Assessment will be ba based on these new core standards and that to position our students to do as well as possible, these curriculum changes need to be completed prior to the projected online testing in 2015. Next, we talked about the Focus School Report. This past August, the state of Michigan, using the top-to-bottom ranking and its various components, began designating selected schools as reward schools, priority schools, or a new category called focus schools. Focus schools are those demonstrating the largest achievement gaps between the top 30% and the bottom 30% of their students. Bob Cooper presented the CAS committee with information regarding how focus schools were determined, the status of the five MPS focus schools, the steps being required by the state in the process, and plans of actions at each of the MPS buildings. The state has continued to work on the process of identifying focus schools and the steps schools need to follow once they are identified throughout the school year. Focus schools should have a clearer picture of how to proceed in future years. So we, we received a lot of information, and um, as always, it was a very good meeting. Our next meeting will be held at the Franklin Center on April 15th, where we will be visiting the, uh, all the, the science area of our, of our district. Thank you. Any questions or additions or, of Lynn? Okay, seeing none, we'll, we'll move on to the rest of the curriculum. Dr. Ellison. Yes, thank you, Mr. Wasserman. This evening I have a, a textbook to present for you for the 28-day period of examination. The book is um, listed in your agenda 
and it will be available at my office if someone would like to take a look at it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll move on to finance, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Klein. Yes, and I am also pinching for human resources, so I'll just roll from one to the other. Uh, we have gifts totaling $3,500 that we've received and processed in the last two weeks. Chestnut Hill PTO has donated to the purchase of library books for their media center. Uh, the Midland County Youth Action Council, known as MICYAC, which is the student youth grant-making arm of the Midland Area Community Foundation, provided grants for the Read Naturally intervention at Adams Elementary. And then the Jefferson Parent Advisory Committee contributed to purchase some table, te table tennis table. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Uh, ping pong tables <laughs> for the after school ping pong club at Jefferson. So we thank all three for their donations. Under human resources, we have uh, ex first an extension of our deepest sympathy to the family of Mr. W. Herman Giesler, who passed away on March 4, 2013. He was an industrial arts instructor at the secondary level for 39 years with Midland Public Schools, retiring in 1982. And then we have, for your approval this evening, the 2013-14 school year calendar, which was recently ratified as a letter of agreement with the Midland City Education Association. The calendar features a starting date for classes of September 3, 2013, final day, June 11, 2014, 174 days of instruction, Christmas break from December 23rd through January 3rd, and spring break from March 31 through April 4. And we bring that for your action this evening. Okay. Uh, accept a motion for the calendar, then we can have the discussion about it. I'll move to approve. Seven points. Support. Move by Ms. McFarland, supported by Dr. Kaminsky. Uh, questions and comments for Linda on the calendar. And it, is, there, is there much different as far as how the school conferences are done? Um, is it, is it purely similar in structure carried forward? Uh, structurally, it is very similar to what we've done. Uh, high school parent-teacher conferences are scheduled October 15 in the evening from 5 until 8. Middle school, November 12. Mm -hmm. uh, elementary, half-day release on November 13. Okay. Professional development days scattered throughout the year. Okay. Uh, there's no significant change in the calendar for 13-14. I think the committee that worked on it used the prior year's calendars as their starting place. Yeah, and I think uh, I think that you know with this uh, letter of agreement, any concerns as far as structuring the um, the parent-teacher conferences? That's you know that's worked out pretty well with all the parties involved. I seem pretty happy with it. So no changes. Okay. Linda, I meant to bring the calendar. Can you, or if you have it off the top of your head, can you uh, say for public consumption what graduation night is? I couldn't remember. Let, graduation will be June 6th. And what day of the week is that? Uh, I think it's probably a Friday. It's is it probably Friday a again? Friday, but I should be able to I know I've been trying to make them Fridays. So that would make sense. Calendar very quickly. Let's see. We went 2014. June 6th is indeed a Friday. Okay. It is the Thank first you. Friday in June. This ends the school year one day <laughs> earlier than what we do this, this year. year. The last day for students, I believe, is uh, June 12th. Okay. And there's still two weeks at Christmas, I noticed. <laughs> People like that. Just the way it falls. We tend to hear about that. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions? If not, we'll take a, a vote on the motion. I'll do a roll call vote, if you would. Yes. President Wasserman. Yes. Vice President Baker. Yes. Secretary Kaminsky. Yes. Treasurer Brandstam. Yes. Member Gordon. Yes. Member McFarland. Yes. Member Vanderkellen. Yes. We have a unanimous vote for the calendar. Thank you for the work everybody put in and for the consistency year to year for our parents and, and kids. Um, listed in the agenda is the uh, uh, communications to and from the Board of Education. Also a list of scheduled activities. Um, we hope soon to be able to publish the um, full, in this schedule of activities, all of our activities around the superintendent search, including interviews. We firmed that up last week. Uh, board members and community members are starting out here when the focus groups will be for the input into that process. 
Uh, they're on a three-day period, successive days from April 9, 10, 11, uh, with uh, evening sessions for the public at large and many daily sessions. And for those who are um, invited to attend one of the particular subgroups, if you want to call it that, of course, if you cannot make it then, you are more than welcome to attend an evening session and or another affinity group that looks halfway like yours because we want all the, all the input. Um, but that will be published shortly. Uh, as we saw in the um, presentations, we hope to basically working from the back that in the first week of June, we'll approve a new contract for the new superintendent. Uh, had interviews in the last week of May, the last full week of May for the final candidates and in the first-ish week, May 6-ish, on the uh, first wave of candidates, just to kind of put it in, in reference frame. Um, but you will note us on our on our calendar here, April 3rd uh, budget workshop, uh, 29th budget workshop at, <laughs> sorry, Linda, at, uh, at uh, 3 in the afternoon. That meeting will be followed immediately with a closed session of the board for the superintendent candidate uh, uh, resume reviews that is allowed to be done in closed session as part of the process. So note to people that's at 3 and uh, there will be closed session immediately thereafter. Um, we're now going to go into study discussion, hearing from the board members and announcements from Carl. Um, start to my right this time. <clears throat> well, first, I would like to thank Yvonne Fisher for being the event chair for the Booster Bash. The party Friday night was first class. Thank you for organizing the band, the prizes, the silent auction, and the venue. My husband enjoyed the cheers as we entered the buildings as the students made everyone feel welcome and appreciated for their support. Nice touch. Also, thank you to all of her helpers, Jerry Crane, Rich Jude, Holly Joswiak, Maria Crane, Denise Huss, Lisa Tendler, Carol Cushman, Aaron Malcadelli, Kathy Morley, Ann Seymour, Lori and Ken Babinski, Steve and Mary Ann Flaminio, and Rob Rouse, and all the generous donors that made this silent auction a success. Everyone involved has helped the youth of Midland by helping continue sports opportunities for all the students. Participating in school sports has proven to improve the youth's feelings of self-confidence and self-esteem. Participation increases positive feelings and attitudes towards school. It encourages positive social behaviors and improves grades and achievement test scores. These sports programs have been shown to reduce problem behaviors and drug use. Thank you again for all the hard work. You have made a difference in the lives of the students of Midland Public Schools. And Yvonne responded to my request by saying it takes a village. And I said, what a nice village we live in. And I have this book for everyone. This is um, about having a highly functional board. And I received it as a gift. And so I thought I would like to share it with all of you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Lynn. Well, I was just going to say what a lot of nice, nice topics to discuss tonight. It's nice to have a really positive meeting. And uh, thank you to uh, all that are involved with the uh, East Lawn Common or Community School model, Bonnie and Shannon. And uh, thank you for, for doing that at East Lawn. We know the need is there. And wow, to listen to to Doreen and uh, Chris and um, Mike? Mark. Mark. Close. Mark Steve. I didn't have it written down. Just just an incredible job in, the, in these few months, and it is very exciting. Um, so we'll be anxious to, to hear more about it. And uh, with, to our vets that were here, I, I was going to ask them um, how many flags they purchased. I mean, that's a lot of flags when you think of all the, all the, the classrooms in, in Midland Public Schools and beyond. Um, the Booster Bash, same thing, just a lot of great feedback, a lot of information. So many of our students, I, I don't even know the percentage uh, that are involved in sports in some way, shape, or form, whether they play, whether they're managers. Um, it, is, it is just a great, great event to be able to, to uh, support our, our kids so that they can have those um, wonderful opportunities. And I think on the last note, spring break is a couple days away. And so it's been different for me this year. I don't have one in Midland Public School, so I don't keep track of the dates so much. So I don't have a place to even go next week because she, <laughs> she's at school. So 
Anyway, enjoy. It's much, much deserved, and, and everybody likes that little break. And, and uh, with it being around Easter, that's nice for everybody, too. So we'll see you when you get back. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say, too, that I think this community school model program is so exciting. Um, I'm a person who has worked with adult offenders for a long time, and I have, for years, I have firmly believed that if, you know, a lot of them had had some early intervention, I may never have met them. So um, I think this is really great. I, I really strongly believe in early intervention. So I'm really excited about that. And I think we, I'm really appreciative of the flags. That's quite an effort to flag for every classroom. We have a lot of classrooms. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much to all the people involved in that. And I think that's it. Thank you. John. Okay. <clears throat> I was at Booster Bash too. I saw other board members there. And anytime I had an opportunity to thank parents, and thank the organizers for the time that went into that event. Um, I heard great things about the facility, how much time was allowed setting up, and very supportive of Dow Diamond uh, to help us out with that event. I'm impressed with the community resources, the collaboration going together to make that happen. And so it's great to see those resources come from the community. Having a one-time big event, uh, I know that businesses get asked an awful lot, and that's one way to pull our resources. Uh, with our uh, our fundraising and it's it's very much appreciated it makes a big difference in the boosters so it's very much appreciated congratulations to the charger high school varsity team it was just awesome to see students having that opportunity um, thank you to the vets um, for um, looking at their patriotism and looking out for that aspect and that connection to their community i mean it's really great um, and as as we go on i'm looking forward to our superintendent search and also a chance for uh, for Carl with you to reach out to the community on the marketing, you know, talking about the technology bond, looking at the sinking fund, and allowing us an opportunity to have accurate information out and, and to talk about th this time differently. Um, I look forward to having that information get out into the community, and I think that we started over a year ago with our community forums looking at 21st century learning, and we hear all the time in education as board members, how can we do education differently? And I think this is a really good opportunity for us to for those passions and those people that are realizing that we need to move forward. Education can look differently. We can do things better. And we're being judged on a global scale. And I, I really think that this has an opportunity to move us in that direction. And I think that having the full understanding information, I think it's going to um, help uh, us uh, get our community on board more than they are. Great. Right. Well, I, too, attended the Booster Bash. It was fabulous. But I know a lot of times I do talk about sports. So I had something else tonight. This Wednesday, I thought this was interesting because I don't remember this. Well, maybe because my daughter's only in seventh grade. But this Wednesday, the orchestras are all going to have a festival at the Midland Center for the Arts. And I thought, what an outstanding opportunity. They're going to go there for the entire day, followed by a concert at 7 o'clock at night. So I looked into it a little more, and I found out that the Midland Symphony was actually supporting this. So another outside um, interest that is really supporting um, our programs at the public school. And they also have a lot of support, obviously, from the Midland Center for the Arts, since that is the location of it. And then also last week, they had a very similar thing for the orchestra, or not orchestra, for the choirs. And that was actually sponsored um, by the music parents in the school system. So um, if anyone is available, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock at Midland Center for the Arts, there'll be um, the 7th through 12th grade orchestras from the whole entire Midland Public Schools. Here I am at the end again. Everybody <laughs> covers everything. Um, as, a, as a new board member, uh, this was a really cool experience tonight for me to see all these great things that were brought before us. Um, congratulations to the girls basketball team. Uh, it, just a remarkable season. Um, I was really impressed tonight by the community school model and uh, so much so that when I stepped away from the meeting um, I was actually in the hallway talking to Judge Allen and Mr. Stevens, asking them what I can do to help. Uh, so I will be contacting the judge uh, tomorrow, and we're going to come up with something that I can do uh, to assist them. Because as an attorney, as a former state trooper, and a reserve police officer, I see the problems with kids all the time, and I have firsthand experience uh, in dealing with them. So I, I know a little bit about where they're coming from, and really anything I can do to help out, um, I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, as far as the flags go, I think patriotism in schools is, is absolutely critical. And uh, it was just r really neat to have them come in and, and uh, give that presentation. And, and thank you to everybody who made that possible. So that being said, um, turn it over to Mr. Wasserman. Well, I always get to be last, last. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <right. laughs> 
So don't have a lot to add, but I would like to pile on on thanking the boosters for what they pull off uh, in the last couple of years now, now being a united front, single community front, and the enthusiasm and the work that just goes into that. And highly urge uh, our public in general, come to the event. Come to our event. Bring your roll of 20s. Um, there's lots of fun going on, and it raises a lot of dollars uh, for, for, the, for the sports programs in our district. And it's just so neat to see everybody so enthused as, as one group. And seeing the group of uh, the mix of Midland High, Dow High kids as you walk in cheering you as you approach in the first hour, what struck me the most and uh, it, immediately that I thought was very interesting is it wasn't a line of Midland High kids and it wasn't a line of Dow High kids and it wasn't a line of the girl athletes on one side or the male athletes on the other side. It was a mix. And they were all just having a good time and glad to be there. And it was great to see that. So hats off to the boosters and, and thank you. And I encourage everyone to uh, attend next year, if at all possible. That's all I have. Carl, comments to you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll answer your question now. Later was enough public question. Um, well, I have a bit of a dilemma because I've had two announcements here, and so uh, one of them involves uh, someone who's sitting out in the audience, but the other one involves our Attorney General, so with all um, apologies to Mr. Cooper, I want to show you a picture of a um, ele former elementary student, not current elementary student, that was in the Midland Daily News today, and that's a picture of Bill Schutte, who was at Carpenter Elementary Reading. And it was really interesting, if you've not seen your paper yet tonight, and I don't know how many of you have, I don't think it's just an online article. He, um, he talks about the time that he and his wife Cynthia went through Carpenter. He, he, he reflects on the memories of their own two children uh, going through Carpenter. The investment of time and commitment and otherwise that he and his family have made to that building. You can really tell when you read this article that this building is meaningful to the Shooty family here in town. So it's really nice to see this out in front of the people that probably know that family better than anybody else in the state of Michigan. So thank you to our Attorney General, um, our homegrown Bill Schutte, for showing his support for that elementary building and for Midland Public Schools. So having said that, um, I also have an announcement, which is an interim appointment, which there's been a long history of the superintendent being allowed to do in this district. And that is with the retirement of Dr. Ellison, actually, um, Scott was sitting next to me and he was talking about the uh, memoriam that we did tonight for someone who had taught for 39 years that we gave acknowledgement to tonight. And I was about ready to lean over and tell him that Dr. Ellison, even though this is not a memoriam, has actually been an educator for 41 years. <laughs> 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 and that is indeed a long time by today's standards. And you see people who are practicing this profession now for like 32, 34, 35 years, that is considered very long. When you get up in a range of the high 30s or 41, that is extraordinary. And you don't replace, the board's heard me say this before, that kind of talent and expertise very easily. So um, Mr. Wasserman and I have had a lot of conversation about this because typically if I was not retiring, I would be bringing a recommendation to you, especially if it was an internal promotion for someone uh, to appoint that person full-time to be the associate director for curriculum instruction and, and staff development. But in all fairness to the new superintendent that you're going to hire, be it she or he, they should have some input into that decision. So what I want to do um, is announce to you an interim uh, appointment to that role because if you wait until that person starts July 1st, you cannot go five or six weeks, minimally, maybe even two or three months and not have someone to follow and take care of all the responsibilities and, and the duties that Kathy carries for the school district. You can't spread that out amongst the other three people here. There are critical initiatives related to how our schools get accredited and school improvement process. I'll just give you one example. Focus Schools was dropped on the state of Michigan in about what, Bob, the second or third week in August last year. That's just one example of what can happen if you don't have someone in the position. So I told Bob he didn't have to stand up and say anything to the board tonight um, because, quite frankly, he has an interest in the position long term. And in all honesty, I want this board and our community to know that he has my very strong support 
and my recommendation for doing that. But I also recognize I shouldn't make that appointment knowing that there's going to be a new leader, educational leader here in the school district. So let me give you just a little bit of background that reassures me why Mr. Cooper is a great interim appointment here. Taught for 21 years based on his resume here. He's been an administrator for 13. He's been a, a, a math department head at Midland High School. And he's been a coordinator of mathematics and testing K-12 for Midland Public Schools. Just the last part of that carries an enormous responsibility with all the accountability that's swinging over to public schools now. What else has Bob done? And I'm not going to get anywhere into the detail that his resume has here, but I want to highlight some things that I just think are really incredible. Because I don't believe that he's just a very well-respected staff person by his math department that he's probably closest to in the district or by just our internal employees, or by people throughout the district, or people in the Great Lakes Bay region. This is somebody who has a background and a training and preparation for this job that is really recognized statewide. And when you read some of his credentialing, I think he could compete for this position with anybody locally. He created and defined the district uh, assessment record, DAR, for recording and analyzing student results, not just in math, but in all subject areas. He participates in secondary math teachers' evaluations, and he provides input on elementary teacher evaluations. That is not easy for an administrator to do, because typically you have expertise either in one area, elementary or secondary. Bob is a sought-after resource for our staff here in both areas. He's developed common mathematic assessments at all grade levels and been involved in that same process for all courses. At the district level, he served on the district negotiations team, he has been a longtime member of the District School Improvement Committee, helping facilitate meetings in the absence of the chair. He has served on the district team that guided the implementation of the International Baccalaureate Program. He's the district's point person for focus schools, the new designation I alluded to earlier. He serves as the district contact for report cards, AYP, Adequate Yearly Progress, and any appeals of such. He provides information for the change to the new accountability scorecards and the new colored grades that are coming out that he has yes to, to train all of you about. Um, that's coming down the path. He served as a primary contact with parochial schools, supervising and approaching spending of federal Title IIA monies. Beyond the district level, and I can't emphasize this enough, Bob has worked with the Michigan Department of Education as a grant reader, a MEEP content review committee member, and he's contributed to writing across the curriculum publication and the development of Algebra II and Geometry course tests. That tells me right there that people value his input at the state level. He's been a member of the Great Lakes Bay Mathematical, uh, Mathematics Leadership Group. He provided professional development at various schools, districts, and ISDs, and he's presented at the Great Lakes Bay Summer Leadership Conference. In addition to all that, and I assume this is earlier in his career, he has coached football, high school hockey, and girls softball. He's uh, in the area of technology, developed a plan for the use of 99C middle school math grant and Title IIA monies to equip secondary classrooms with document cameras and projectors and sets of graphing calculators. He's been a district lead administrator on web resources for the elementary Envisions Mathematics and Middle School Math Connects program. <coughs> program. He's trained district personnel on the use of data director uh, as a data warehouse. In terms of communication, he attends and he speaks to parents at enrollment meetings. He doesn't have to do that. He does that because he knows it's important for the curriculum division to have a face there and participate in those meetings. And he does that as well as others. He communicates with each parent um, who has a student that's considering cross-grading about the effects of cross-grading on their student's future and their scheduling choices, not a simple process to explain um, to a parent. He's presented on various topics in the community at board meetings and at parent information council meetings. He's presented a statewide webinar on the MPS integrated math course sequence, the Michigan Merit curriculum, and personal curriculums in general. And he's primarily our designated person to communicate with the local newspaper when they announce our MEEP and our MME scores and so on on district assessments. He's a committed community member here in Midland and has been for a long time. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's been a member of the Board of Directors, member First Credit Union since 1999, and he's currently chairman of that board. He's been a member of the Michigan Council of Teachers of Mathematics, the executive board, 11 years as a regional director, and currently their scholarship chair and treasurer. 
He's been a reviewer of journal articles for both the Michigan Council for Teachers of Mathematics and the National Council for Teachers of Mathematics. This is a guy who sought out even on a national level. And uh, he's been a member of the Association of Supervision and Curriculum Development. We call that ASCD. He was such an outstanding teacher. He was designated a Gerstacker, Gerstacker Excellence in Teaching Award back in May 1999. And importantly enough, he's also been nominated numerous times by students who think he should be who's who's among American teachers. A lot of us will get those invitations. They'll come to you from your colleagues or from others. But not that many of us can say that students recognize that caliber of your teaching. And at the bottom line, when you read through everything else, and you'll probably have an op opportunity to consider him for this position in the future, remember that the foundation underneath all of it, and I've had people who have taught with him who are retired, and students who have had him tell you they've ne never had a better teacher. That makes a great educator. So he is my choice as the interim associate superintendent in charge of curriculum, instruction, and staff development. Thank you. Bob, thank you for taking that on. Highly appreciated. And uh, if Judge Allen is a data hound, I don't know what that makes you. <laughs> 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 and and uh, just appreciate everything you bring to the district and your patience as we go through this. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, you know, we haven't talked about students, and I have some here. I can give you the uh, shortened version or the long version. What's yes, your I, preference? We to, now, we're going to go to closed session. Yes, we are. And then we will come back to open session after that, correct? Yes, and there could business. be potential of could an action business. item um, yep. two, actually, um, after closed session. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a brief version uh, of some of the student items because we've been, you've been so busy as a board, we just haven't been able to showcase student talent in a while. It, um, you know, we often hear about Kids Against Hunger. Midland High is a very active program in that. I want you to know that really back in February, uh, they helped raise over $1,600 again when they helped out at Bettingham's Restaurant, and people contributed dollars on Thursday, February 7th. But more importantly, they got a group together, and they put together the packets for dinners and so on. And with enough for over, I believe it was 10,000. I'll come to that later. 10,000 different packaged meals. It was an incredible thing that they accomplished at Midland High School. A general recognition to all of our student councils, SAVE, KEY, and other clubs, parents, staff members, counselors, and everyone who helped plan, organize, and carry out all of the great activities that took place in our buildings um, for the Anti-Violence Week in February. Your hard week carried the vital anti-violence, anti-bullying message into our students, really throughout the whole system in grades K through 12. We've talked about the Dow High basketball team, very impressive. I, what else can we say about that? It's just outstanding experience for Coach Wellman and those students. Congratulations also to Midland High. Uh, they were chosen to receive the RAISE grant for reading and training uh, of their staff to help their students become better readers. Congratulations to their team for receiving this wonderful opportunity. Also to Midland High, their forensics team captured first place medium team trophy uh, back the first week in March at a tournament in Alma. The entire team advanced to the semifinals, so that's a great job for the Chemex. And then congratulations to five Midland High School students who were selected as representatives for Region 12 in the Michigan Arts Education Show. In early March, the Region 12 representatives went on to be adjudicated at the state level, and those students received multiple awards. Anna Marie Williams Watercolor was selected to be displayed at the Michigan Department of Education Show. Dolan Jones's bronze casting of the Man of Steel was selected as one of the 100, uh, top 100 pieces of student artwork in the state of Michigan. Kelly uh, Maddie's bronze casting was chosen as one of the top 18 pieces and will appear in the Governor's Traveling Show during the state of Michigan for one year. Each student adjudicated at the state level will have their work on display during the Michigan Youth Arts Festival in May at Western Michigan University. So congratulations to the Midland High art students on just a great showing. Uh, congratulations uh, Northeast Middle School and Jefferson Middle School students on their math counts teams uh, that poised first uh, at the Jefferson Middle School team. Um, Northeast poised first and the Jefferson Middle School team placed second at the recent math counts competition at Saginaw Valley State University. We've heard about our Dow swimmers. They've gotten a lot of accolades. Uh, pretty amazing group. Um, 
They participated in, in performances in March Division II, the state swim finals at Oakland University. Congratulations in particular to the 200 freestyle and 400 freestyle relay teams that took second place. These two teams qualified for all American status and are likely to be among the top 50 high school teams in the country in those events, as stated by their coach, Gary Strickler. Congratulations especially to Dow High senior uh, Jackson Gothy, who won the 50-yard freestyle and the 100-yard freestyle events. That is just an exceptional performance from an exceptional, really young man, but an exceptional swimmer. Um, Congratulations again to Midland High. Yes, I was right. They packed approximately 10,000 bags, which equates to around 60,000 servings of meals. That is a, uh, that is a lot of work. Uh, shorten it up just a little bit here. Congratulations to the H.A. Dow High School students. They had the opportunity to compete with over 3,000 other Michigan High School students for a chance to represent Michigan at the DECA International Career Development Conference being held in Anaheim, being held in the Anaheim, California area in April. Congratulations to all the Dow High DECA students who received awards at the state competition. The following students are actually going to be traveling to Anaheim um, to compete in the international competition in April. Abby Curry, Nick Flanagan, Jackie Ido, Elizabeth Meyer, Bill Schutte, Vikram Shanker, and Nick Smith. So I congratulate all of them that made it as a uh, state champion. And then we would be remiss as we talk about the Dow High girls basketball team and the Dow High swimmers if we don't recognize and give an MPS salute to Coach Eric Krauss, who was the Saginaw Valley League Coach of the Year. But that wasn't the end. Just recently, um, he was named the Class A Co-Coach of the Year in boys basketball by the Associated Press. That does not happen very often. Wow. And uh, he'll be very excited by that, let me tell you. Did a great job with the young men, getting them to believe in themselves and got the most out of the talent that that team had. Um, last one, uh, I want to get to our music programs on Saturday, March 23rd. Uh, this last Saturday at MSBOA, the State Solo and Ensemble Festival, two Dow High School events advanced to the semifinals of the Michigan Youth Arts Festival Outstanding Solo and Ensemble Competition. Each event must now audition to qualify for a place on the program at the Michigan Youth Arts Festival on May 9th and 10th in Kalamazoo. In particular, Laurel Wellman is a candidate for Outstanding Soloist. She plays the oboe and is a junior at Dow High. And the Dow High School Woodwind Quintet was nominated to participate in the Outstanding Ensemble Competition. Not only do kids get a great education here and a great extracurricular experience through athletics, but even in our music programs, I'll tell you, it's hard to find a district that does it better and gives kids great experiences. We certainly can improve, but that's pretty wonderful. I want to mention an elementary school because we don't get enough from those schools and give them recognition, I think, at meetings like this. Chestnut Hill students did an amazing job bringing in coins for a coin drive. Now think about this. Elementary students emptying out their piggy banks, or maybe not, maybe going on neighborhood collections, they're donating $1,999.65 in Mrs. Wolanin's name to the University of Michigan Leukemia Foundation. Wow. That's a great note to end on. Wow. Um, last thing, um, I have a calendar here uh, for all of you board members. Um, we said we we're going to start going very public with our campaign for the election uh, beginning April 1st. Uh, you will see on this calendar a list of meetings that we have with different civic groups, civic groups, community leaders, and so on. Uh, Mr. Wasserman is joining me for some of those, but there's an open invitation to any of you if your calendar allows you to. Um, we have uh, crib notes that you can use as you speak that I'll prepare for you. If you can join me, I'd like to take one board member to each one of these events. So if you see something on that list and you want more information about it or it intrigues you or you know people there, uh, please give me a call or shoot me an email and we'll take a look at how many of you want to do that and we'll have some selections because there needs to be an active role for all of you in selling this election on May the 7th as well. And that's it for me. Thank you, Carl. Um, at this point, we will move into closed session if the board so votes to do so. 
Um, so I'll entertain a motion to go to closed session for purposes of discussing uh, two different uh, labor contracts. So moved. Moved by Mr. McFarland. Support. support by Ms. Brandstadt. All in favor of going to closed session? Roll call. Oh, roll call, that's right. I'm sorry. Roll call and closed session. Yes. President Wasserman? Yes. Vice President Baker? Yes. Secretary Kaminsky? Yes, from me. Treasurer Brandstant? Yes. Member Gordon? Yes. Member McFarland? Yes. And Member Van der Kellen? Yes. Okay, I'll ask the room to be cleared and uh, we'll. Do we need a break, board members? What's your few or do you want to just keep going? We need to go sign Let's take there. two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. After the please room clears, be sure we'll to start. Shut off your mics if you would. I'm eating. <laughs> okay, we are we are back in. Um, I'll donate the money to the school. Okay, we are back in open session. Um, the remaining items on the agenda are uh, labor contracts, and at this stage, I will turn it over to Carl. Uh, yes, um, resulting out of closed session, we uh, talked about negotiations with um, two employee groups. I think the first we're going to uh, recommend to you is a ratification of a TA that we have with the Midland City Education Association. Um, that is for an extension of their contract for one year, which would give them a contract um, through the 14-15 school year, uh, essentially carrying the same formula forward that we've had in the recent uh, couple of contracts, um, which could, depending on the amount of revenue that comes in the district, uh, net the district anywhere from a 2% of their cost uh, savings to the district. Uh, if the revenue happens to go up, it could give them a 1% uh, increase. And with that, I'll ask Mrs. Klein to talk about any more detailed information about that, and we bring that to you as a recommendation this evening. Yes. TA stands for Tentative Agreement, and this has already been ratified by the Midland City Education Association. Uh, Mr. Verlindy, the chief negotiator, isn't able to be here this evening, otherwise he would be presenting this to you. As Mr. Ellinger said, the agreement with the MCEA, or the tentative agreement, would extend the duration instead of through August 2014 to August 2015. And the formula that we negotiated in the last contract, which for 2013-14 will result in a decrease of up to 2% or an, an increase of 0% or no increase, uh, would be extended into the 2014-15 year for a decrease again of up to 2%, but the possibility for a 1% increase. And that formula is fairly detailed, but I will say that it is dependent on revenues. So the only way that a 1% increase could happen, or conversely a 2% decrease, would be revenues go up or revenues go down. And we also have increases in the retirement rate treated as changes in revenue. So we feel that this is a, a good opportunity for the district. It's what we would have liked to have seen a few months ago. If we could have extended the contract at that time, we would have liked to have gone to 2015. All other elements of the contract remain exactly as they are. It's just a one-year extension beyond the current expiration. So we would present that to you for your approval. I'll entertain a motion for approval of that contract. I'll move to approve the contract. I'll support. Moved by Scott and supported by Angela. Comments and discussion? Board members? None? Well, for the sake of being repetitious, um, this contract extension is getting um, a wage situation much as we desired to have in the original negotiation of the current contract to go through this year. So basically, um, we have been offered an opportunity to do so uh, with this uh, request by, by the union. And so, as Linda said, if our revenues go down, meaning which is a factor of student account plus foundation allowance and lots of other details, um, there would be wage reductions to a maximum reduction of 2%. And if for some reason our revenues went up, uh, there would be wage increases up to a maximum of 1%. And so with that, I'm uh, very inclined to vote for this. We get, the, we, we get the, the terms we originally wanted in the original contract with this one-year extension that makes me feel very positive. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Okay. 
President Wasserman. Yes. Vice President Baker. Yes. Secretary Kaminsky. Myself, yes. Treasurer Brandstam. Yes. Member Gordon. Yes. Member McFarland. Yes. Member Vanderkellen. Yes. 7 0 vote. We have an approved contract. Thank you to the Teachers Union. Thank you, Thank you very much. They'll be happy to hear that. The other contract that I alluded to is a, um, um, a recommendation to the board for the adoption of a contract with our paraprofessional organization. Um, uh, again, this is a suggestion that came from them uh, as part of uh, negotiations, and that is that they would like to freeze their wages um, for the next two years and essentially um, uh, very minor contract changes other than that. Uh, and we'll ask uh, Cynthia Finney, our Director of Human Resources, to describe that contract to you in a little bit more detail. Okay, we have the paraprofessional contract that expires June 30th of 2013 this summer. Um, and um, it's our recommendation um, that we carry the contract over for the 13-14 school year and the 14-15 school year. And it would be 0% increase of the salaries um, but they do get their steps um, of the salary schedule. Um, and um, just a few um, clarifying points of that we would work together in regards to the professional development um, that is new to us this last contract. So we will carry that over as well. And um, really, that those are the only changes that were made to the contract. So it's a two years, 0%. OK, I'll entertain a motion. Move to adopt the new contract. Support. Moved by Member McFarland and support by Secretary Kaminsky. Comments, questions by the board? Seeing none, uh, I'd like to thank the para union for bringing that proposal forward. Um, we'll take a roll call vote. President Wasserman? Yes. Vice President Baker? Yes. Secretary Kaminsky? Myself, yes. Treasurer Brandstamp? <laughs> yes. Member Gordon? Yes. Member McFarland? Yes. Member Vanderkellen? Yes. 7 0. We have unanimous uh, approval of that contract. So, uh, Just a quick comment to uh, thank uh, yes. Cynthia Finney and uh, Mrs. Klein and Mr. Verlindy. I mean, they carry the, li carry the lion's share of the load, of course. And we take our direction from the uh, Board of Education. and. Uh, that's what we talk about when we have closed sessions, about what parameters you want to give us and how do we conduct negotiations and, and things like that. But it's not always easy to follow through on those, especially in the kind of uh, labor um, atmosphere we have in the whole state of Michigan with the economy struggling the way it has been up until uh, perhaps the most recent um, uh, year or so. So I want to thank the three of them. Gary and Absentia uh, receives the same thanks because that's not the most fun part of the job, but it's one of the most necessary ones because it keeps us as financially stable as we all know we need to be because that's so critical to the future of the school district. So thank you. And I'd also like to a shout out to their counterparts at the association also for yeah. bringing things forward and uh, in a spirit of uh, a little more less acrimonious than in the past, much, much, much positive and working together. And it wasn't a delayed long term thing. And it was great to see us work this out quickly. I can add one thing. Uh, just thank you to the stakeholders for all this, the uh, the sacrifices and the administration. Everybody works hard on that, and you just the, the sacrifices and the effect on people's lives is much appreciated. Thank you. Alrighty, that uh, subject is closed. There's nothing else on the agenda. Uh, that being said, we will adjourn. <laughs>